From Silicon Slopes, I'm Josh Matches, and I'm joined by Andrew Limpert, the CEO of Firefly Automatics. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. It was a little rainy out there, but we made it anyway. We sure did. So talk to us about your company. What does Firefly Automatics do? Firefly is a leader in ag tech. That's a big, broad statement, but what it means is we have autonomous tractors, autonomous mowers that mow sod farms across the world. A sod farm is where you get your grass from. You don't really think about it in this state, you think, or in this country, my kids are gonna go play soccer, I'm gonna watch a football game, I'm gonna go golf. Where did all that grass come from? It's actually grown in a crop that's 50 million acres in the United States. That crop has to be mowed once a week and has to be harvested. It used to be where people would go out, kids mostly would have a job and physically pick up the sod, the turf, and put it in the back of a truck, it'd be dusty and grimy, but guess what? Kids don't wanna work anymore. People don't wanna work anymore. We don't have enough labor for uh, construction, let alone working on a farm. And so where we've met is, where we've met the demand is with automation and robotics. is sort of taking the place of old school labor and that type of thing. So that's what we do here. That's amazing. And can you talk to a little bit about the technology behind this? Because I think it's so interesting because there's, this is obviously something that's gone on for a long time, but not with the automation and level of sophistication to which you've taken it. Yeah, it's gone on for a long time, but it's all been in the form of hard physical labor. So right. you'd have four people with a tractor stacking sod as, as, as fast as they can. And, and it's getting dusty and grimy and people are stopping to go to the bathroom, get a big gulp. Nowadays, they stop to text their girlfriend or whatever, so it's very disruptive. So right now we have, what's, we've made a factory on wheels. It's as big as this room, it has 4,000 parts. It has a controller, it has, it's connected to the internet. It has robotics that actually visually see each piece of turf that comes up the conveyor. And it says, is that a good piece of turf? Yes, we'll take it and we'll stack it on our, on our pallet. Is it a bad piece? We'll reject it. And so it's analyzing the grass. It's seeing how much water content is there. Do we have too much fertilizer? Is there too much nitrogen? Not enough phosphorus? Are we overwatering? Those are kind of things that are, that are critical today with, with aspects of global warming, which is so interesting, especially with the NASDAQ's position on ESG. Yes. You think about global warming and, and some of the effects there, grass actually is one of the things that counteracts that. It softens up the world. Uh, for every acre of grass, it produces enough oxygen for 17 people to breathe. Now you start to think about that. You think about when you go for a walk at Central Park or you play golf or you just take a drive and you see uh, nice parks and, and, and you know places to play with the kids, all that is producing oxygen that is helping the human race. And so we're perpetuating that. We're making it easier for farmers to get this out in, into with new homes and new schools and new opportunities. But but there's more. I know you want what, more. You want I a little bit more. Want more. You want you want a little bit more. <laughs> I'm just giving you a little bit of a nugget there. But you start to see this migration out of urban areas. And it happened perhaps because of the pandemic. Could have been riots and things the last couple of years. What are people doing? They're saying, I love New York, but I want to go out to the suburbs a little bit. Maybe I'll try Texas. Maybe I'll move to Florida. Well with that, new homes are being being built and created all the time. So there's actually a human migration macro event happening on top of the fact that we just don't have enough labor. So the answer to that is robots. Robots don't think, they don't, again, they don't check their Facebook status, they just work. They just go forward and work. And that's where we're at in, we're in an industry that hasn't been disrupted in 30 or 40 years. And so we're very excited to partner with the NVIDIAs and the National Instruments, the Waymos to take their technology and use it to leapfrog 10 and 20 years forward in, into the future with our basically what we call factory on wheels. Amazing, and it's so necessary right now, especially like you said, with all of these people migrating to the suburbs. Um, so let's talk about your career in entrepreneurship. You have a storied career in entrepreneur. Um, in 2018, Utah Business named you CEO of the year. Talk to us a little bit about your career history and what led you to this moment. That's a wonderful question. I frankly don't think we have enough time for it, but I'll give you a little bit of color. So I've always been one to think outside the box, uh, uh, maybe an innovator or disruptor. I, I, I tend to see things not as they are, but as they can become. That's a scary place to be because aspiration can be dangerous. Authenticity can be very dangerous. It's very risky to be who you're supposed to be instead of kind of conform to the group. But I think it's a parallel to with to, with what NASDAQ's done. You see so many, what I, I see in your, your advertising re referred to as moonshots, like chances that are so ridiculous, most people would kill those ideas when they were started. And so I've always tried to think big like that. 
Um, I was in an oil company before. We had technology that reduced emissions. That was pretty cool. And then I retired and I thought, well, you know, going to the gym's fine. Playing golf all the time is great. But after about a year, you start to go, there's a little more to this. So the founders of Firefly were my next door neighbors in elementary school. Wow. They went to engineering school. They got smart. I went to business school and tried to just figure out how to live off guys like that. And 40 years later, we come back together and they had this idea. We built this technology and guess what? They sold some and then they decided how in the world are we going to build this thing? We don't have any money. No one's believed in us. This is too scary. It's too risky. So I was part of that catalyst to help them get the initial capital together. But more than capital, what they needed was leadership and guidance because engineers forget that they need to communicate with human beings. They love talking to computers. They love talking to big gulps with Mountain Dew in them but they forget that we have to pay the bills. And so we started to bring a business discipline to Firefly. So my background's always been investing in young companies, looking for opportunity. And again, the key is seeing things not as they are today, but as they can become. And I think it's a fantastic parallel for Firefly and what we're doing here on the NASDAQ. Absolutely, it's such a great vision. Um, and your wife, Trina, is also a very successful entrepreneur. So does, is it, does it run in the water in Park City? Is that well, what's it, going on? It has a little bit to do with that. Now, to, truth be told, she has a better business degree than I do. <laughs> and she's a snowboarder and I'm a skier. And so there's a, an inherent conflict right there. So it, she's extremely competitive. In fact, we went fly fishing one time and she was a, what's called a fish counter. So pe some people just go fishing and it's fun, right? All right, we had a great time. We, we got a little sunshine, some fresh air. No, she's like 17, how many do you have? And I'm over there just trying to figure out how to get the fly out of the tree. And I'm like, I caught two and a half, you know? But so she's super competitive. But if you utilize that and embrace that, that passion is what you want to call it. And you focus it on positive things, you can change the world. And so what she's doing with her volunteer work is much needed. And it is something that I've seen people change, not just the women that she's working with directly, but down the chain to the children that perhaps of those moms. They need to have a better vision. And what I, what I tell her is you're not selling technology, you're selling hope, you're selling opportunity. And hope is, is for the idea of something better in your life, something out there that perhaps it, you have you have the ability to have a, a better economic situation or a physically safer situation or maybe get out of um, you know toxic relationships or whatever it happens to be but what she's doing is a powerful enabler to help people have hope and i don't think it's just limited to moms i think it's to anyone who wants to take that next step which i encourage them that if they remember the small daily incremental gains in their life will add up. It doesn't seem like much, but it's sort of the Warren Buffett concept of compound interest. Yeah. It's so powerful, but it's so subtle and it's so simple that most people won't do it. Like, give me, give me a pill to take. I want to change my life. Give me a pill. Well, the pill is try a little harder, read a little bit more, get up a little bit earlier, take a walk, drink some water instead of that beer, whatever it happens to be. Those small, subtle incremental changes they apply in life they apply in the way you look and they apply in your business. And so I think that's the message that Trina's sharing is have hope for a better future, but don't just sit around and hope. Let's get doing something about it. Yeah. And I think that's very similar to what we do at Firefly. We take big chances, huge chances. We're gonna be one of the first companies in the world to drive revenue from autonomy. You hear about it all the time. Tesla's always pushing autonomy, but think about autonomy in a, a, a private farm. We have to mow a thousand acres of grass every week. It's the most boring, repetitive, non-cool thing you can think of. You know, you know I mean, it's just, it's, right it's a perfect, automation. perfect place for a robot, a nameless robot. Number 207, go over and mow that field again, you know, and we'll come and change, change your fuel tomorrow, whatever it happens to be. So what's so exciting about what Firefly is doing is we're in a niche that's a blue ocean. Nobody's fighting over it. Nobody cares about it. It's sort of a throwaway, but it, it's allowing us to get a critical mass that one day these big companies, and I don't need to list them because you know who they are, they're going to go, wait a minute, this group out in, in Utah with these 40 or 50 engineers are now one of the leaders in autonomy and electric vehicles and hybrid technology. How did they do that? Well, we have 50 million acres to practice on. Yeah. And it also uh, is, is, a, is a powerful thing for, we think we make a difference for people when it comes to next time you're laying in the grass somewhere with a friend. Think about where that grass came from. That was grown somewhere. That was someone's crop. 
and at the same time that's producing oxygen for you. So that's our way of contributing to the mission of ESG for what NASDAQ stands so much for. I think with what Trina's doing, um, sort of with diversity of boards and, and multiple perspectives and that variation adds power, we're also a big part of that at Firefly. So it's fun how this is dovetailed together. Really? So what's next for Firefly Automatics as you guys continue to grow? Well, great question. I'm glad you asked it. One of the challenges of small companies is matching capital with their growth trajectory. NASDAQ does a wonderful job. In fact, I was talking to Liz for a few minutes before, and if you go back to the birthday of NASDAQ, which was, I think, February 8th, 1971-ish, yeah. plus or minus, I know there's a birthday cake around here somewhere, so that's the birth of NASDAQ. But if you, if you parallel that with computers, semiconductors, cell phones, solar, and now we're into electric vehicles, there was a catalyst or an, an, uh, an industrial revolution, if you will. And there were always these fantastic ideas, but there wasn't the growth capital to do anything about it. So now we're going through another drought like that again. And if you're a unicorn, if you're connected, if you're in the club, great, you get funded. And people call your house and they say, would you like a billion dollars? Would you like to do this? Well, guess what? I'm not in that club and 99.9% .9 of people are not in that club. So what NASDAQ is doing is the hope for competitive equity financing and exposure to those, those markets at a much earlier stage. So for Firefly, we're in the midst of preparing for what would be a listing on NASDAQ where we would raise capital with like-minded partners, people that have a vision of ag tech being sexy, okay? Um, that, that autonomous driving is, is cool, that EV helps save the world, all those types of things where labor is, is, is a, a real risk or a real problem. And so that's something we've been working on. We pr we're preparing our, our board of directors and getting our committees in place. And that's the na next natural step for us is to get the capital to then hit the next part of the growth curve for our company. So over the next year to 18 months, I would expect that you would probably hear something. Um, we'd, we'd love to do this again and share this story. And, and I even told Liz, when we list, we'd love to have one of the harvesters drive down Broadway. Absolutely. Put it right there, put, it, put a 20,000. Bring 000, it right into Times Square. Put it right there on Times Square, put the velvet ropes around it. We'll get Kramer to come down, do his little dance. Jimmy Chill will be there. And maybe we'll get one of the Nigerian brothers and we'll go, this is the future. You don't even know it. And this is a joke that I often leave people with. So the, our name is Firefly, but the, the second part of our name is Automatics. And it's a word you've never heard before. It's because we invented it. So Automatics, in Latin, loosely, means the robots are coming and you better join them. And I made that up completely. <laughs> so, but if you study your Latin, automatics means the robots are coming. That's just kind of a, a theme. And so we feel that's the future, is that the way the human race progresses is to utilize and embrace technology, and in this case, robotics, to make a better life for, for, for people. Incredible. Well, Andrew, thank you so much for joining us and sharing your vision with us. And we look forward to hearing about how Firefly Automatics continues to grow. Yeah, and keep studying that Latin. Gonna keep studying it. Thank you. <laughs>